Down through time and across many cultures, people have believed in the concept of reincarnation. They believe our souls return to Earth time and again to learn lessons, before we can move on for good. Those are the stories we'll be exploring here tonight. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and comment below. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way. And let's get scared together, 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 together. When I was five years old, I had a dream that was so vivid, it's still fresh in my mind 36 years later. In the dream, I'm in my early 20s, which in and of itself is kind of strange. We usually dream of ourselves at our current age or younger, not older, and significantly older at that. The dream started from a third-person point of view, but only for a second or two, then it went to first person. I was scared and being chased through a parking lot of an apartment complex. I kept yelling, Help me! Help me, please! He's trying to kill me! There was no one else around, so I kept running through the complex hoping to find someone to help. As I got to the final building, I turned and ran to the front door. I remember clear as day banging on a white metal door with three triangular windows on top. I kept banging on the door, saying over and over again, Help me! He's trying to kill me! Then, I felt a knife being plunged into my back, right between my shoulder blades. And in that instant, I woke up. By the way, I've had back issues in that very spot for as long as I can remember. Fast forward to age 11. My dad, stepmother, one-year-old brother, two-year-old sister, and myself we're moving from West Texas to a tiny town in Oregon. We drove there in our station wagon, planning to make one stop in Colorado to visit my dad's favorite niece. Along the way, we made a stop in Idaho at a random roadside park. I was sitting in the back seat just looking around at the scenery when I turned my head and looked out the driver's side window. And there it was, the apartment complex that I had dreamed of being murdered in all those years ago. The moment I saw it, I remembered my dream. The complex layout was exactly the same. It had the same baby blue paint and white trim, and the same white metal doors with the three triangular windows on top. I just stared at it, completely dumbfounded. At that moment, I realized that the dream wasn't really a dream. It was a memory of how I died in my last life. What else could it be? I'd never been to Idaho before, yet this exact same apartment complex was in my dreams at the age of five. When I got older and had access to the internet, I would do research here and there trying to find out where in Idaho we were at the time. I couldn't ask anyone. My brother and sister were just toddlers at the time. My father died a few years after the trip when he was just 33. And since I'm 99% sure that my stepmother is the one who killed him, I want nothing to do with her. So I was on my own when it came to finding that apartment complex again. I've traced the most likely routes that we took, and I looked for roadside parks. I even looked up old murders in Idaho, but I didn't have much luck, until Google Maps came out. That street view was a godsend. And two years ago, I found it. It had a different paint color, but the doors were the same. Just looking at those pictures online, the place seemed hauntingly familiar. Not long after that, I came across a news article on Ted Bundy. He confessed to killing 23 women across America, many in and around that area, just a few years prior to my birth. Now, stabbing women in the back wasn't exactly his M.O., but his victims did often have knife wounds on them, and he mostly targeted small, dark-haired women. And that's what I look like now, and in the dream. Before I discovered any of this, I had seen a movie about Ted Bundy at my best friend's house one night. I was so scared, I refused to go home for a few days because I lived alone at the time. Thank God she didn't mind. I never really understood why that movie affected me so deeply, though. 
About a year ago, I was doing some research on his victims, and one stood out to me, Karen Campbell. We look so much alike, we could be related. We have the same cheekbones, forehead, nose, jawline, eyes, straight dark hair, everything. She even appears to have a scar on her left eyebrow that makes it appear somewhat crooked. I also have a scar on my left eyebrow from chickenpox, and it makes mine look crooked too. Karen was murdered in 1975, three years before I was born. She was 23 years old at the time, and 23 has always been my favorite number. Some people think she was his 14th victim, but many believe that she was his 13th victim. And most of the worst events of my life happened when I was either 13 years old, on the 13th day of a month, or in the year 2013. Part of the GPS coordinates of the location where she disappeared in Colorado match up with my birthday. It's 624W, and my birthday is June 24, or 624. Karen's middle name, Eileen, is very similar to the name my mom wanted to name me before my dad chose Dawn, which, ironically, is the actual middle name of another of Bundy's victims. The only thing that doesn't match up is that she wasn't killed in Idaho. She was his first victim in Colorado, which was the last place we stopped for any length of time on that trip. I don't know what to make of that, but I still feel connected to her somehow. Since they didn't find Karen's body for five days, and Idaho is so close, maybe he drove her to Idaho to torture her and keep her for a while before killing her. Then he took her back to Colorado to dump the body. That is a possibility, and it would clear up the only detail that doesn't seem to fit. With so many other facts that do fit, it's kind of hard for me to believe that there isn't a reason behind all of this, you know? This would also explain why in my dream, the location didn't seem familiar to me. I wasn't looking for anyone specific to help me or running to a particular apartment where I knew I'd be safe. I was just screaming in hopes that someone, anyone, would hear me. I only stopped at that apartment because it was my last option. That apartment complex was secluded enough not to have heavy traffic, but still close enough to other people that he could have the thrill of doing this in public and possibly getting caught. He liked that. He liked living on the edge. Or should I say, killing on the edge. It made him feel superior to get away with doing things in public and then hiding in plain sight. I'd love to do a past life regression, but I don't know how. Where do I even go? That's why I'm writing this. I'm hoping someone can point me in the right direction. Maybe I can find some answers and be able to heal old wounds. I don't know a lot about past lives and reincarnation, and I'm not even sure I believe in any of it, but I've always felt a connection to certain moments in history. I'm on the autism spectrum, and I lack empathy. I don't feel much when I hear sad stories, although I can recognize the sadness in them. But I've always had very strong feelings about World War II and the Holocaust. I feel some kind of connection to it, like when I'm watching a World War II-based movie, or reading books about that time in history. Another thing, I freak out when a plane is flying anywhere near me. The sound of it alone scares me, and it's been this way since childhood. I have a distinct memory of being in the woods with my cousins building a den. There were a number of planes flying overhead, but I couldn't see them through the trees, only hear them. I kept thinking, they're going to bomb us. I didn't say anything to my cousins, though, because they didn't seem to be affected by the sounds of the airplanes at all. When I went to visit my sister in her home near the Heathrow Airport last year, I'd freak out every time I'd hear a plane fly over the house, which was several times an hour. As you can imagine, it was not the most restful of visits. Anyway, do you think these feelings could be from a past life? Has anyone had similar experiences? I'd love to hear about it.
When I was a little boy around three or four years old, I remember telling my parents and grandparents that I used to be big before and that my grandmother was my mother back then. I said that my car crashed and I died. I gave them details like the color of the car, names and places of things that I knew, and things that I did in this previous life. And the details always freaked them out. They thought I was the reincarnation of my uncle, my father's younger brother. He died two years before I was born in a car crash. And the details I gave matched up with the details of his life. As I grew up and got older, I forgot all about the memories. However, something happened a few days ago that changed that. I started having very lucid dreams. I was aware that I was dreaming, but I could manipulate things within the dream and do what I wanted. In the dream, I came across a window, and when I looked through it, I started having vivid memories from that other life. Everything was crystal clear. I saw a lot of different things from that life, but one of the most important ones? I saw myself sitting in the front seat of a car with a girl. We were talking and just about to kiss when I woke up. Later on, I asked my mother about the details of my late uncle's life to see if they matched up with what I saw in the dream. And they did. One hundred percent. You can do a past life regression on yourself during meditation. You can even speak directly to your past incarnation sometimes and to others who shared that past life with you. I once had a vision, for lack of a better term, when I first began meditating around the age of 12. I was in the shower when I heard thunder, so I opened my eyes, and I was no longer in the shower. I could see a Roman soldier that I felt was a friend of mine, running up a hill next to me. On top of the hill, I was leaning on some kind of structure to catch my breath. It felt like we were in trouble and trying to get away from something. My friend began to speak. Then he suddenly fell forward, dead, with an arrow in his back. I turned to look, and I saw a small group of Roman soldiers coming towards me. So I ran. But before I could go far... I felt a sharp pain in my side and collapsed to the ground. The next thing I knew, I opened my eyes and I was back in the shower, but on the floor. I wasn't hurt, so I'm not sure how I got down there. My theory on the vision is that we were two deserters trying to get out of the army, and they tracked us down and killed us. The thing is, I don't think we were Roman, even though we were wearing their uniforms. I was a woman in the late 1800s in what I believed to be Paris. I had five or six miscarriages, and because of that, my husband gave up on me. He started staying out at night and not coming home. All of my friends in that life had children, and I didn't, so I fell into a very deep depression. I ended up jumping off a bridge into the river below and drowned. I discovered all of this during a past life regression, Looking back at that life, I was feeling like I wasn't good enough, and I carried that feeling into this life with me. After the session, I was able to let go of some of those feelings, but I still don't like to be near water if I can't see the bottom, and I can't stand having my face or head under the water. I start to panic. It's been a lot easier to deal with things, though, since I learned that we design our own lives. We choose all of our life events, even the bad ones, so our souls can learn and grow. It's made me more attentive to my life now, because I certainly don't want to be stuck on this wheel forever. I'm curious, does anyone else remember killing themselves in a past life? And are you still feeling the ripples of it in this life? Yes, me. During a regression session, I remember being a blind person in a wheelchair. I couldn't move my legs, but I felt something heavy in my left hand. 
And when the therapist told me to move to the end of that life, I could hear in my head, the hell with this, and felt something cold press against my temple. I shot myself in the head. It wasn't so much that I was depressed, but I wanted freedom from that life. In this life, I have very bad eyesight and a birthmark on the temple where I shot myself. But thankfully, no inclination to kill myself this time around. In my life before this one, I was a country girl who grew up in the 1930s. I moved to the city, met a man, and became pregnant. But he had no intention of marrying me. He was just someone who took advantage of a young, naive girl. I felt such horrible shame about being a mother out of wedlock that I killed myself. In this life, my own mother killed herself when I was just two years old which I think is some kind of karma for me. Also in this life, I had a crazy fear of becoming pregnant before marriage when I was a teenager. Even when I was married, the thought of being left by my husband and having to raise a child alone kept me from ever having kids. It's just as well, though. I don't think I would make a very good mother. In one of my past lives, I was a girl of 16 who left home. I fell in love with a guy that I thought loved me too. We talked a lot about getting married, but he didn't think his family would accept me because my family was poor and his had money. After a while, I became pregnant, and I thought that meant we could finally get married. I was so excited I couldn't wait to tell him. But he panicked, and he told me it wasn't his. He said if I slept with him, that means I must be sleeping with other men too. And he wasn't going to get trapped by a gold digger and have to raise some other guy's kid. The emotional devastation I felt actually caused me physical pain. I was in total despair. When he left the house, for what I thought would be the last time, I grabbed his gun and shot myself through the heart. He ended up coming back, but it was too late. I was already dead. Since then, we've spent many lifetimes together trying to figure out this love between us. In each incarnation, we've always been viewed as wrong by our society. One of us would be too old, one would be already married, or the wrong race, or the wrong class, or whatever. Something always stood in our way. In this current lifetime, we're both from very religious families, and both female. But we finally decided to let love win and be together openly. We ended up losing our families and many of our friends in the process, but it's been worth it. In a past life, I was a young housewife with three children. I had a very wealthy but philandering husband. Because he cheated all the time, I felt depressed and helpless. I tried talking to friends and family about it, but that didn't help. All they did was point out that if I left him, I would have absolutely nothing. They told me I'd be dumb to leave him because I had no education, no job, no money of my own to live on. So one day, while the kids were at school, and my husband was supposedly at work, I popped a bunch of pills, got in the bathtub, and slit my wrists. Almost all of my past life regressions are depressing, and I'm depressed in this life, too. My suicide happened in the late 1960s. I was married to a man I was madly in love with. One day, I was notified that he had an accident at work and died. I was so distraught that I killed myself by jumping out a window. I believe this explains my behavior in this lifetime. I often think of throwing myself out a window 
and I have a very deep fear of heights. Also, I felt like anybody that I dated or fell in love with was going to die suddenly. Then I had a past life regression session, and things have gotten a lot better since then. I had a past life regression where I seemed to be a young girl in her late 20s. I lived alone with no family or friends in what appeared to be England. All I could do to survive was farm a small plot of land. It was a very sad existence. I was very lonely, and since I lived near the sea, I chose a day that had a very beautiful sunset and walked into the water to drown myself. The whole thing was very sad. I guess that's why in this life, my friends and family mean so much to me. I also have a phobia about water. Whether you believe, are a skeptic, or are somewhere in between, you have to admit that the stories about reincarnation are fascinating. Thank you so much for listening and for being part of my family of darkness. Now click on the screen above to hear more stories like this so that you can stay scared until we meet again, my friends.